Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap and this is the new 2019 Dell XPS 13. Although you wouldn't really know just by looking at it. But if you look closer, you'll notice the webcam is now on the top bezel, so it's not looking up your nose. Dell's finally fixed it and put the webcam up top. The screen now supports proper Dolby Vision HDR, although that is only on the Highways 4K touchscreen model. There's a fingerprint reader built into the power button, and if you dive into the specs, you'll see the new Whiskey Lake U processors. So there's a few upgrades and tweaks, but nothing really earth shattering, and to be honest, just nothing to get that excited about. And in some ways, it feels like it's falling behind rivals from the likes of Asus and Huawei. For instance, you're stuck with Intel's integrated graphics chip. There's no option, even if you go for the highest end, I think nearly 2,000 pound model, there's no option for a dedicated graphics chip like the NVIDIA MX150 that you would find in something like this, the Huawei MateBook X Pro. MakeBook, MateBook X Pro, which is actually nearly a year old, and I believe we may see even a revision of this coming soon. And while obviously this isn't meant to be a gaming laptop or something for 4K video editing, when you do get comparably priced premium ultrabooks with a dedicated graphics chip like the MX150, which offers significantly better performance, considering the price of this and the fact that Dell are saying they've perfected the formula on this Dell design, it does just feel like we're missing out a little bit. But in Fortnite at 1080p with medium settings, the Dell XPS averaged 11 frames per second versus an average of 35 on the MateBook X Pro, albeit with a few hiccups probably down to the throttling. And it's not just games. If I fire up Premiere Pro, a 5 minute 1080p video took 26 minutes to export on the Dell versus just 12 minutes and 15 on the Huawei. And that's using last year's i7-8550U. In Dell's favor though, it does stay cooler and quieter, especially compared to the MateBook. I recorded a peak temperature coming out the fans here of 40 degrees under load, and at its loudest, 36 decibels. So that's not too bad at all. But going back to the performance, and while it is lacking in the graphics department, the XPS is far from slow. My model with the quad-core i7, 16 gigs of RAM, and fast NVMe 512 gig SSD feels nippy and responsive in general use. The new Whiskey Lake U processors aren't a huge upgrade over last year's, but with higher turbo boost clock speeds, combined with improved cooling so it doesn't throttle as much, it actually performs really well. But overall, we're looking at about a 10% boost in performance over last year's XPS 13. So if you're thinking about buying this as a bit of a work or travel laptop, then it's more than powerful enough. And it is pretty capable of a bit of light photo editing in Adobe Lightroom, or even 1080p video editing in Premiere Pro. Design-wise, even though we're now on the third iteration of this chassis, it still looks great. The super thin Infinity Edge bezels look particularly nice on the 4K model, which flank the gorgeous 13.3 inch HDR display. So you can do a bit of Netflix and, well, whatever goes with Netflix, but now in vibrant HDR. Now what we need is an OLED option, which is actually coming to the XPS 15 in March. So I reckon next year for the next Dell XPS, we will see an OLED option, which will be pretty cool. So it's a good looking laptop overall, but personally, I do think the white, the frost white looks a bit nicer than this standard silver and black. And once again, while the carbon fiber palm rest does look classy in its own way, it easily picks up greasy smudges, which can get frustrating. As for ports, as long as you're happy with USB-C and Thunderbolt 3, then you will set. A single USB Type-A or even a full-size SD card reader would have been nice, but I guess that's the compromise with small form factors like this. I do like though how it uses a USB-C power adapter, so you don't have to bring an extra charger with you for your phone if you're going out and about. The speakers are the same as before, we've got one on each side, just on the edge of the palm rest, and they're unchanged from last year. They're okay, but they are seriously lacking in bass. And while we do have this uh, Max Audio Pro software, which helps boost the volume and you can play with different equalizers, but it doesn't make up for that lack of bass, and overall I would say the speakers are average at best. But one of the more, well, noticeable changes this year is that new webcam. Dell say they've been working on this for two years, inventing a whole new camera module to fit inside that tiny bezel. So the webcam is in a much nicer position. I don't normally spend this much time talking about webcams on laptops, but obviously it is the biggest criticism we have with the XPS series. I'm glad they have now put it at the top. And this is the quality, which is pretty good. This is nice lighting. So if you are someone who does lots of Skype calls, business calls, this could be a step up, but nothing mind blowing. 
Weirdly though, despite the upgrade, the XPS 13's webcam doesn't support Windows Hello for face unlocking. Instead, you'll have to rely on the fingerprint reader or a good old fashioned pin and password. For me, battery life has always been a selling point of these XPS laptops. But with this 4K model, you'll only just get a full workday out of it. Obviously, the high resolution has a big impact on the battery life. I average nine hours of use, which is actually still fairly decent, but if battery life is more important to you than a sharper, glossy HDR touchscreen, go for the Full HD model, which will last about 30% longer, so around 13 hours. The keyboard and touchpad are still among the best on any laptop out there, in my opinion. They're reliable, comfortable, and lovely to use. One thing I'm noticing as I'm typing and using the XPS is just how loud the touchpad is. You don't have to click it in, of course, but if you're using this on the train or in the office next to someone in a quiet environment, they're gonna get really annoyed with you very quickly. It's so loud. <laughs> so then, should you buy the new XPS 13 9380? Well, prices start at 999 pounds, but that gets you a Core i3 with just four gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. So I would avoid that model. And personally, I'd recommend the one that goes for 1250 and you still have the Full HD screen, which I would go for because, well, it's cheaper and you get much better battery life. This particular model with the i7, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gig storage, that'll set you back 1650. That is quite a lot of money. But overall, I do really like the XPS 13. There's nothing to get that excited about, really. There's just a few little upgrades all around, but they needed doing and they have fixed the biggest issue I had with last gen, which was that webcam. So you know what, they have essentially perfected the XPS range. But as I say, now we're in the third iteration, it's getting a little bit long in the tooth perhaps. It'd be good to see something a bit new. And personally, what I would also like to see is an option to get say an MX150. Maybe next year we'll also get an OLED screen. It's also using the same killer 1435 Wi-Fi module that last year's model used, which some people had issues with, but it also does lack Bluetooth 5. So a newer one of those would have been useful. And while not everyone would agree, I would personally really like to see a three by two aspect ratio version of the XPS. This is obviously 16 by nine, but I do quite like the three by two you get with the Huawei MateBook X Pro. Which do you prefer? Which aspect ratio? Vote in the poll at the top right, 16 by nine or three by two, which is a little bit taller. What do you think? So that's it really. The XPS 13 is a fantastic laptop, but there's not a whole lot new and it does have strong competition from the likes of the MateBook X Pro, which as I say, we may see a newer version of coming soon. And also the Asus ZenBook series, the Razer Blade Stealth, new MacBook Air, or even the uh, Microsoft Surface Laptop 2. There's a lot of laptops, a lot of competition in that premium Ultrabook space. So it does feel like Dell needs to do something a little bit new next year. But for now, this is still a very, very good laptop. Thank you so much for watching guys. Hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more of my stuff. And I'll catch you next time right here on The Tech Chat.